Welcome back, everybody. All right, so now we're gonna change uh, course completely, and we're gonna start studying cardinality. So so far, we've been concentrating on showing how the axioms are good enough to develop uh, most of mathematics and everything uh, we want we know from mathematics. And now we're gonna start kind of going to the stars, kind of like when physics studies like the regular world and then uses the physics laws of the regular world to study the stars. We're gonna be doing that, but now with sets. So now we're gonna be studying um, cardinal sizes of sets. Um, for the first few classes, we're gonna just consider uh, small or smallish infinite sets. Um, but then we're gonna start going to all different kind of uh, sets of, of sizes of sets. So the first question is, uh, how do we tell that two sets um, have the same size. So for finite sets, there are many ways of doing that, and as you know many. Uh, for infinite sets, that gets a bit, um, well, you have to figure, decide on some definition. So we're going to use this definition. So we say that two sets, A and B, are equinumerous, written A double squiggle B, if there is a bijection between A and B. So that means there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between each element of A and each element of B. Every element of A, you get too much to every element of B. So it has to exist some bijection like that. Whenever you have a bijection like that, you say that they are equinumerous. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense for finite sets. Uh, and for infinite sets, that's what we're gonna use to say that they have the same size. It kind of makes sense. Um, so this is a nice, uh, kind of like an equivalence relation. Uh, every set is uh, equinumerous to itself, just because the identity is a bijection between a set itself. If A is equinumerous to B, then B is equinumerous to A, because the uh, inverse function of a bijection, still a bijection. And if A and B have the same size, and B and C have the same size, then you can compose those bijections and get that A and C are equinumerous. All right, so this is kind of an equivalence relation. Why do I say kind of, and I don't say it's an equivalent relations? Because this is a relation on all sets, right? So remember that to define a set using the subset action, we need to take a subset of something that we know already. And now this, this relation might or might, we'll define it among any two sets. Anyway, among any two sets, it might or might not be a numerous. So we're looking at a class of all sets. So it's not a set, so uh, that's why it's not an equivalence relation, but it kind of behaves like an equivalence relation. Okay, so let's see some examples. Uh, which probably most of you know, some of many of these. The integers and the natural numbers, they have the same size. Okay, so to show they have the same size, you need to find a matching between the two of them. So we need to find some bijection that goes, let's say, from the integers to the natural numbers. It has to be one to one and on to. So what do we do? Well, we say uh, we let f of z be depending on whether z is positive or negative. We let it be two z or negative two z minus one. So that's um, so. What does it do? So this this map here, if you have the integers right here, I want to draw the integers zero, one, two. They these numbers get mapped. This one gets so this is in the integers f. 1 omega, 0 is going to be mapped to 0, 1 is going to be mapped to 2, so the positive numbers are being mapped to the even numbers, and minus 1 is being mapped to 1, 3, 5, and the negative numbers are being mapped to the odd numbers, and they are just sit inside, and we get a function that is 1 to 1, um, and it's on to, right? So that's how you get the bijection between the integers and natural numbers. Positive integers you map to the even numbers, negative integers you map to the odd numbers, and you end up mapping, uh, doing a full correspondence between all of them. Right? So, okay, so that means these two guys, uh, despite of one being like essentially a subset of the other, well, it's an embedding, but uh, a proper embedding, proper subset, they are still the same size. You can still find the bijection between them. So another uh, important example is the rationals. So the rationals are also the same size as the natural numbers. Um, and let's do this proof. Let's do this a little bit. 
So recall that the rationals were defined to be uh, the quotient of z times z plus uh, modulo this equivalence relation that we defined a few classes ago where essentially a pair uh, p comma q is representing the fraction p over q and then you say that two pairs are equivalent if they represent the same fraction so that's how you define the rationals so now let me do one thing first so we're going to define a function f from omega from the natural numbers to c cross c plus remember z plus is just the positive numbers that are here and we do it as follows. Um, we're going to let this one, I mean, let's call this, this maybe it's f, f red. This one I'm going to call f of 0. This one I'm going to call f of 1. And I'm going to go here, and then I go here, and then I do f of 2. Then I do f of 3. And then this one is f of 4. And this one is f of 5. And then I come here, and I do f of 6. Then I come here, here 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 okay so this way I define a function that is uh, from the picture it's obvious that is one to one and on to it's like I put in a number to each uh, pair from z comma z plus times c plus 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and so on and so forth you get the point you just go around and making sure you go through all pairs and you end up with a bijection. So this is a bijection from the natural numbers to c plus z plus. You may say, well, what, that's not an actual, how do you find this in set theory? Uh, this is just a little picture. Um, well, you can do it. I'm not going to do it, um, but it takes a little bit of work, but then you can find a little formula depending on how to do a lot of cases, but you can definitely find a definition for a mathematical definition for this formula right here. Yeah, it's a bit tedious to find it and then you have to fin figure out which way you are, if you're in this arc or if you're in that arc, a bunch of cases. But yeah, there is a mathematical formula you can write, a bit annoying, but you can write that it's gonna give you this bijection. So that gives us a bijection from the natural numbers to z plus times c plus. But then you say, well, but that's actually not the, the rationals, because the rationals are uh, the quotients, right? And if you map each one to the equivalence class, then it's not onto, right? Because what we have is that all these guys, all the guys in the same line, I don't know if you remember, they are representing number one, right? And the same number. So all the ones in the same line represent the same, the same point the same rational, this is the equivalence class. So that means each rational is being counted many, many, many times, right? So that's not a bijection if you map it, if you map it into the rational. If you go into the quotient, it's not a bijection. It's still onto, but it's not a bijection. So you need to fix it a little bit. So what do we do? Well, we're saying, so let's define, and we do it uh, by recursion on omega. So we say, okay, so g of zero is gonna be, uh, we look at f of zero, and we take the equivalence class of that. The equivalence class in the quotient for the natural numbers, right, of course. The one we are, the question that we use to define the rationals. And then what do we do for g of n plus 1? We would like to define it to be the equivalence class of f of n plus 1, but that's not what we want because maybe this guy has already been defined, right? So maybe we are, maybe this equivalence class is exactly this point up here, but uh, here is n plus 1, but have, we have previously defined somebody to map to 1, 1, and now we are defining somebody to map to 2, 2. And it's the same rational, so we don't want to repeat. We don't want, so we have to be a bit more careful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this. this. We're gonna say this is uh, this is the class of f of k, where k is the least such that for every i less than n, g of i is not equivalent to f of k. So it's the first one such that we haven't yet defined anything that is equivalent to it. So essentially, we are kind of a g is kind of following f, but it's keeping the steps that are already equivalent to something. So maybe let, if I do it, draw it, it's gonna take a mess. But essentially we are doing, okay, so here's our zero value, and here's our one value, and this one. And then zero two uh, is, uh, is the same as zero one, so we skip it, we go to here. That's our next value, and we have this one, and then we have this one, and then negative two and Negative two and 
two, and these are the same, these are the same rational. They both correspond to the rational uh, negative one, so we skip it. And that one is new, um, is it, I think it's new, and then this one is new, then that one is not new, so we skip it, and then that one new, and then this one we skip it. So we keep on going like this, and skipping the ones we already used. I will equivalent right to something else. And this way we get that G is a bijection. It's on to because it's going through all the rationals. So we're just we're we're only skipping the ones that are repeated. And it's one to one because we are skipping the ones that are repeated, so we're not repeating anything. So it's bijected. Alright, so that's how you get that the rationals and the natural numbers are in one to one correspondence. So they have the same size. Okay, so the rationals, even though they look like there are many, many more rationals than there are uh, natural numbers, same size, same uh, cardinality, that's what we call it. It's the bijection between them. Um, so sometimes when people look at this first, they'll say, well, that is two sets, now you can define any two infinite sets. And um, so here are, are another ones, um, another example, the, in the reals and the interval 0, 1. So, here are the reals, 0, 1, and we're talking about uh, that interval right there, and all the reals. Is there a bijection between them? Do you guys know a function like this? Um, well, if you remember your, your calculus, the function at tangent, do you remember tangent, how it looks? What does tangent look between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? And it looks like something like this, right? You guys remember that? It goes to infinity when the angle goes to pi over 2, to 90 degrees. And it goes to negative infinity when it goes to negative 90 degrees and it's zero at zero. And so, and it's one to one between those two points and it's onto. So it's one to one and onto from negative pi over two, pi over two to all the reals. Okay, so then we get that um, the reals are equinumerous to the interval negative pi over two and pi over two, right? So that's the map. It's uh, every real, this real is in correspondence with this real between pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then we are stretching essentially the whole open interval to the whole line. Um, right, so you have to imagine you're stretching it. This one go, all these points go there, these points go there, and you kind of stretch it. And you get um, every point in the interval in correspondence to one point in the line. Okay, so now this is for negative pi over 2, pi over 2. And we started saying uh, 0, 1. It's not exactly the same, but uh, okay, but then that should be easy, right? Now we should be able to draw a bijection between the interval negative um, pi over 2, pi over 2 to the interval 0, 1, right? I mean, just any, any linear bijection uh, should do. f of x equals pi x minus pi over 2. Right, so that formula right there will map uh, the interval to the interval 0, 1. So this one is bijection, pi over 2 to 0, 1. So you get that these two are also uh, equinumerous. All right, so all open intervals are equinumerous, and they are equinumerous to all the real numbers. Uh, cool, so we have the integers, the rationals, and the natural numbers are equinumerous to themselves. The reals and any open interval you choose in there, it's okay, numerous to themselves. What happens between them? Well, we'll see that in the next video.